Praise the Lord and good evening once again. And thank you so much for tuning into Lighthouse. We want to bless the Lord once again for this opportunity to minister to you. And we want to thank God for his protection over us. Uh, this is John Bosco Kimara once again, bringing the word of the Lord to you. And this, this day, we want to focus on something which is very relevant to us as Christians in this world that we are living in today. Today I want us to talk about our relationship to the world. How should we as Christians be able to relate to the world? Because Jesus said that we, he prayed for us that we should not be taken out of the world, but he should keep us from the influence of the world. Therefore, that's what I want us to look at uh, this day. We want to thank God, and let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, and we bless your name. We pray, Lord, that your word will go out in clarity and purpose and minister to your children. We thank you for the power of your word that you've given us, King of glory. We pray that this day, let your name be exalted as we go through your word. I pray that people will be blessed. Every viewer will be blessed. Every listener will be blessed. Father, let your spirit move out and teach us in every way. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, today I want us to look at something which is very relevant to us. And we are going to read from the book of First John, chapter 2, uh, verse 15 to 16. And this is what the Bible says. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the <coughs> excuse me, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Hallelujah. This is the word of God. First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. And the Bible is telling us here that we love not the world. Perhaps we would want to know, when we talk about the world, we sometimes think about the creation and think about uh, any other thing. But the world basically refers to uh, the system, a system that operates a certain, the, the way we live in this, in this world. It's the system that uh, drives things. And we know that this system is one that is mainly opposed to God as we, as we look at it. It is quite independent of God. And we see that this system does not only consist uh, in the obviously things which are evil, immoral, and sinful, uh, but it also refers to the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of rebellion against our God, resistance to the things of God. And of course, every indifference to God's revelation uh, to, to mankind. You see, so we find that anything that is not under the lordship of Jesus Christ becomes resistant towards God, becomes rebellious towards God. And God is, and the Bible is telling us that this is what we need not to love. The Bible is telling us not to love the things that are opposed to God. And we see that in this world today, what the enemy has used most is the system of this world, the ideas, the morality, the philosophies of this world, you know? And of course, the desires and sometimes even government policies the culture, the society setting. These are things which the devil has used, including the economic system, in, in the political, the, the medicine, science, science, for example. The scientific world has greatly been used by the enemy to oppose our God. So these are, these are the systems that we are talking about. And God is telling us not to love. Amen. God is telling us not to love this because these things are opposed. They are opposed to God. They are opposed to his people. And they are opposed to his word. You see? So they live, you live in a, in a form of rebellion when you begin to love 
the world and the things that are of the world. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 26, it says that for what is a man profited? This is Jesus himself speaking. He said, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that you can actually excel in the things of the world. You can excel in the things that the world considers to be very, very, very important. You can gain fame. You can move around the world and you are taken as the most important person. You can be a celebrity and you know everybody is struggling to get your biography, to get your signature, to, you know. But you can still be rejected by God because when you love the world and the things that are in the world, you are most likely going to be opposed to the things that heaven loves most, and that is your relationship with God, your relationship with your creator. You will still end up in hell because anything that opposes God, God cannot accept, you know? Hallelujah. So this is what the Bible is telling us. Let's read in the book of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 9 to 16. We're going to read this and uh, look at a few things. The Bible says, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now, this is what is very interesting. For you and me who are Christians, for you and me who know the Lord, the Bible continues to tell us and said, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible is telling us. That we have not received the spirit of rebellion. We have not received the spirit of things which oppose God. But we have received the spirit of God which reveals to us the things of God. We are privileged as Christians to be able to know the things of God because Without the spirit of God, we cannot know the things of God. And of course, there are those who are opposed to God. Don't blame them. They don't have the spirit of God. God has not given them his spirit. Or God has given them his spirit, but they reject it. So when they reject the spirit of God, they cannot get the revelation what God would want uh, them to have. And therefore, they continue to live in rebellion. And the Bible continues to say, with things also... We speak not in the words which, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man, the unregenerated man, the man that is opposed and alienated from God, separated from God. When they, are not separ when they are separated from God, you cannot be able to know the things of God. To those of you who are watching and you're not born again, you don't know the Lord. You are separated from God. And this may sound like something very new to you. It sounds like a mystery. It sounds like a fable, something you don't understand. The thing is, you have not received the spirit of the Lord to have the revelation of God. But if you feel in your heart today that something is prompting you, that is the spirit of the Lord that is speaking to you. He is calling you to him because you know God is love. And every opportunity God gives us is that we may know him. So he begins to speak to us. He begins to minister to us in various ways. He speaks to us even things through nature, you know, through friends, through, even through children. God can begin to speak to you. 
When you get this prompting in your heart, that God is prompting your heart, the Lord is trying to speak to you, and that's how he reaches to you that is not saved, you that is not regenerated in Christ. You are living in rebellion against God, and God wouldn't want to have that. Because the truth is, God did not create man for destruction. No. He created you to, have, to live with him, to be with him. He created you to be his very own that he loved. That's why in the Garden of Eden, God had fellowship with Adam almost on a daily basis. The Bible says when he walked in the cool of the day, in the evening, when things were quiet and calm, he was coming to fellowship with Adam. But at that point, Adam had already sinned. You know the story, you know? And because of sin, he was separated, you know? He was separated. What separates us from God is sin. What separates us from God is sin against him. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah 59, from verse 1 to 2, you know, that our God, his ear is not blocked that he cannot, cannot hear. His eyes are not blind that he cannot see, you know. Neither is his hand sure that he cannot reach us. But our sins have separated us from him. When our sin separates us from God, we cannot be able to know the things of God. And that's why the Bible says that but the natural man, the unregenerated man, the unregenerated soul cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. Hallelujah. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The things of God are spiritually discerned. The Bible says that God is spirit. And therefore, those who worship him must worship him in, in spirit. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in verse 16 that, But he that is spiritual judges all things. For you and I as Christians that are spiritual, we discern all things. We judge all things because we see things from the perspective of God. We see things from above, not as the natural man sees. You don't see the way nature operates the same way someone who is not born again or the unregenerated man begins to see things as a born again, as someone who walks with the Lord, as a child of God, who is called by his name, and that is why you are called a Christian, because you are Christ-like. You discern the things of God, and you are able to judge. You judge the things of the spirit, and you judge the things of the physical. That means you live both as a spirit, and you live as a physical man. That is the beauty. That is an age that we have over the world. That is an age that we have over the systems of the world because we are able to judge the things of the world and the things of the spirit. And this is given by the revelation of God. Hallelujah. And those of us who are not saved and you are watching by television or social media, today, if you would want to experience the love of God and this revelation that God gives to those to, uh, to whom he has given his spirit, you are welcome. Only don't resist the prompting of God. Don't resist his calling. He's speaking to you. And that's why you are able to get that prompting. If you have watched up to now and you're still listening, the Lord is speaking to you. God is calling you to his side and he wouldn't want you to live outside of his will. Hallelujah. And so that's why the Bible says that he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged by no man. Hallelujah. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But, praise the Lord, but we have the mind of Christ, the things which God has prepared. Praise the Lord. This is the beauty. As a Christian, this is your privilege. This is your privilege because the things which God has prepared for those who love him can only be understood by, by the believer. Through revelation, through the revelation of God, we know that we have eternal life by the revelation of God. We know that we are born again by the revelation of God. 
We know that we are sinners and we need to turn away from our sins by the revelation of God. It is a privilege. It is the grace of God that makes us come to that point that we are able to realize that we as men, as mortal men, we need God. We need to be translated in his image. As a Christian, you are a Christian because you are supposed to be Christ-like. You know? In the book of Acts, we see that in the book of Acts chapter 11, the Bible tells us that the people of Antioch were called by the people that saw them, the disciples of, of Jesus, were called by the people of Antioch Christians because they behaved like Christ. They moved, like, everything they did, everything around about them was Christ-like. Everything about, around about them was, was pointing to Christ, was pointing to the way Jesus lived, the way he taught, the way he carried himself in society, what he did. You know, they were following him, you know? Praise the Lord. So as a Christian, as you read the Bible, as you study the Bible, the Holy Spirit will begin to illuminate this truth to you. You will begin to understand this truth to you. So we thank God that by revelation, we have this salvation. When God reveals himself to you as your Lord and Savior, he's calling you. He's calling you. When he reveals himself to you and you realize that you're a sinner, if you realize that you're a sinner, he's calling you. And God is calling you because he loves you. And he would want you to be on his side. I encourage you, don't resist. Don't resist. When you hear the voice of the Lord today, don't resist. If you're a sinner, pray the sinner's prayer and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I believe I'm a sinner and I'm separated from you. And I would want to come back. Come into my heart and save me and be my Lord and be my Savior. You know? But if you resist, listen. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. To us who are saved, to you whom God is calling, you whom God is prompting his heart or her heart, it is the power of God that is working. The power of God is calling you to him. The wisdom of the world is foolishness to God, let me tell you. You can have all the, 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 the wisdom of the world. Name it. They are very powerful academicians who are renowned, professors of the highest level, but they are, to the eyes of God, if you don't subscribe to God, to God that kind of wisdom God calls is foolishness. And the Bible says in the scripture that God will confound the wisdom of the wise. He will make them foolish. Praise the Lord. He will make them foolish. If you're, if you're looking at the wisdom of the world to make things move, God will turn that wisdom into foolishness. And I wouldn't want you to be in that area. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the book of, of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter, chapter 3, yes, chapter 3, verse 18 to 19 says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the, the wise in their own craftiness. Praise the Lord. Now the preceding scriptures, gen ladies and gentlemen, tell us that the wisdom of the world only leads to further separation. When we focus on the wisdom of the world, the system of the world, the things of the world, with a complete and total disregard to the things of God, we are only going to live our lives in rebellion 
to the principles of God and to the statutes of God. God needs, he has requirements for us to be like him. He has requirements for us. And let me tell you this. Let me announce to you that this world that we are living in is still our father's world. It is still God's world. And he has anything to do with it. He can do anything with it. Because this is his world. This is our father's world. Hallelujah. So we need to be conversant with that. We need to be acquainted with that. That the owner of this world is one day coming to take over his property. This is his. We are not going to live in total disregard of God in this world when it is his world. This world is not for the devil. This world is not for those that, that, be, that, that live in rebellion against God. One day, he is coming back. And actually, he has already started. We shall see in the preceding message how the Lord is already working to restore this world and all of us unto himself. Praise the Lord. So when we take on the wisdom of the world with total disregard to God's requirement for our lives, we start living in rebellion. Let me just give you some few examples. This, the devil has used, last week we were talking about the sins of the Canaanites, you know? But you know, the devil has gone to another level and has used medical science to promote the killing of innocent babies in the names of abortion, you know? It is medical science. It is proved with research. I don't care what kind of research, but as long as the research is opposed to heaven, it is a rebellion against God. As long as the research does not promote the will of heaven, it is a rebellion against God. Another example we see here that God has, I mean, the, the, the enemy has used agriculture to promote the use of narcotics and alcohol. You know, legalization of narcotics is now very common in many countries, and they promote it in the guise of growing medicinal marijuana, medicinal narcotics, alcohol, you know, which has destroyed several lives. But these are things which to many of us is normal. Another example we see that the enemy has used education education our education system has become so ungodly to the extent of promoting human philosophies for example the big bang theory which points to another source of life denying that god is the creator denying the existence of god this has created Several atheists, many people who don't believe in God. It is a system of education. It is being taught to our children right from the, from, from the time they start their school. They begin to pump it in their heads that God doesn't exist in the names of Big Bang Theory and whatever theory. And they begin to draw the young minds away from God. You see, another example is the enemy has used the media industry and entertainment industry to destroy generations, to destroy the, un the, the godly standards, you know, and to make it even worse, this entertainment has come to church. We have, we have, we have brought the entertainment system of the world into the church. You know, in the name of attracting the, 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 the people into the church. I don't buy that. I don't buy the idea of attracting the people of the world through their system of entertainment. The way of dressing and dancing and even speaking. You know, we begin to speak like, you know, celebrities, rock stars and, you know, because we are preaching, you even begin to change. Uh, be, re be original. Be I speak, I don't have to speak the way an American speaks. I speak original like a Ugandan. You know? 
I love the way Nigerians do their things. For them, they don't hide. They just speak. They speak their language in English. You see? But that's, that's who they are. That's what God has made them to be. You know? So let's not use the entertainment, you know, of the world to attract people. When you use the entertainment of the world to attract people, believe me, there will be no difference. Brother Wilkerson, before he died, he gave his testimony. God sent him to the part, a part of New York, which was the worst place. But God told him and said, you will follow my standard, not the standards of those people. Don't use their standards. And when he began to follow the standards of God, the drug addicts, the prostitutes, the, what, the, 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 the drug dealers, they began to flock his church because they were seeing a difference. He did not use their system to attract them. And that's where we need to be as Christians. Beloved, this is something that we need to take it very, very seriously. God has... Now, now, the other thing, the other example as we wind up in this session is that the enemy has used the area of fashion. We don't have time to talk much about this. Maybe in the next session. But the devil has used fashion and cosmetology uh, to glorify worldly things. Eh? to glorify God, godlessness. And you know this thing has come into the church. Right now you go into the market to buy a dress or a, 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 a trouser or what. If you are serious, if you are a serious Christian, you won't be able to get a, a Christian dress. Because everything is now, is either exposing your butt, exposing your chest, exposing, you know, we are in a generation where we need to expose ourselves. We need to show ourselves, you see, how muscular I am, how fat my hips are, and you know, how good my legs are. We are trying to, to, to show people, and the cloth or the dressings that are in the market are basically doing that, promoting that. So as Christians, we need to be different. We need to go back to the original to, to the original calling of God. But you see, the worst part of it is that the, the system of the world is now even being practiced by the so-called Christian organizations and churches that are not focused on Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall talk about how we should maintain our relationship with the world when we keep the principles of God in our next session. But remember this, God loves you and would want you to be on his part. May the Lord bless you. Let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you for this message. We are praying that your word will minister to your people and continue to speak to them. Whoever is listening to this and watching, oh God, reveal to them that you need them pure and holy, acceptable to you because you're a holy God. I thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. And God bless you. See you next time. Amen.